Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Breakdown Easy Archetypes that Teach Hand Traps Hello there, fellow students. As you have been enjoying these easy archetype videos, we're now going to I'm now going to cover these this archetype that will help you understand and learn about hand traps and how to use them. And the best archetypes for this is Cyber Angels with Heralds. Facts. So this is the archetype that you're going to need to get to learn about hand traps. This will teach you, uh, my fellow students, if you're a newcomer to the game, how to utilize uh, hand traps effectively, how many you need in your deck, how to utilize them, as the deck is constructed by using the entire Cyber Angel and Herald archetype to understand the purpose and significance of how hand traps helps you in playing Yu-Gi-Oh! With that being said, let's get on with the rest of the video as I go over to the next slide to talk about these four cards that you see in front of you. These cards are Ritual Sanctuary, Senju of the Thousand Hands, Manju of the Ten Thousand Hands, and Shouju of the Trillion Hands. Each of these four cards has a particular effect related to ritual summoning. Another thing to take note is that with the effect of the field spell, this is going to allow you to easily access your ritual spells, allowing you to get yourself the ball rolling into ritual summoning. Okay, you with me so far? That's great. Let's proceed. It's all coming together. As we go to the next slide here, we can see here, here's where it all starts. As we will, if you have a good starting hand, you'll activate pre-preparation of rights, add yourself the Cyber Angel Ben 10 or Eda 10, and then there you go. You'll use Benton's effect, obviously, to add yourself uh, the Herald Monsters. If we go to the next slide, you can see the Herald Monsters that you're going to be adding. Either choose the amount of Herald Monsters you're going to add. Will it be the how many Herald of Orange Lights you're going to add, the Green Light or the Purple Light? This is where the Hand Trap version uh, comes in and where you need to know how many of these you play. And this will be a good lesson for you as newcomers to understand what are the effects you're going to prioritize on. Maybe it might be best you play two Herald of Orange Lights, two Herald of Green Lights, and two Herald of Purple Lights. Just two is the best number for this job. Play two, two, and two, and then see how it goes from there. Anyways, going to the previous slide, we can see here with preparations of Right Saber, Angel, Editon, and Benton, we can see here furthermore, we learn loads of things, and we you can see here that with Benton's effect, uh, when it's used for rituals, when it's tributed, you can add yourself any light fairy. During this combo and during all the manners of things that you're going to be able to be doing here, you'll be able to add yourself, uh, as we can see there in front of you, the Herald of Orange Light, or Herald of Green Light, and Herald of Purple Light, as everything is all fairies. Now, you look at this, and you might be overwhelmed with everything that I'm saying. Why well, you got to be so complicated? Obviously, yes, it is overwhelming. But the most important thing here is to just keep it simple. Use the effects of them to add yourself the corresponding ritual spells or ritual monsters with the Manju, Senju, or Shouju. Use the ritual sanctuary to add yourself the ritual spell. So, and then use Benten, use it for a ritual summon tribute, and then you'll be able to add yourself any fairy. But as we go to the next slide, what you really want to be doing here as now to utilize the hand trap version of this is you want to make yourself the herald of perfection. First of all, you'll want to use the Banju, Senju, or Shouju to add yourself the Dawn of the Herald. That will then allow you to Tribute it with the Daron of the Herald Tribute Benten, which will then allow you to add the Herald of Orange Light or whatever fairy you want to add at this point. As at that point in time, you are going to have hand traps, okay? At this point in time, as you've been playing this deck and your main boss monster is going to be Herald of Perfection, here's where you begin to understand where hand traps come into play. Okay. The Herald of Perfection has an effect that is not once per turn, allowing you to negate uh, an effect by simply sending a fairy from your hand to the graveyard. That's really convenient. Furthermore, you can send additional fairies from your hand to the graveyard, trigger the 
um, effects of, you know, set fairies or set cards, and you can do little combo wombos. But the point of this, my fellow students, is that once you've mastered this, once you've either ritual summoned, either Herald of Perfection, Herald of Ultimateness, you begin to see the role of hand traps in Yu-Gi-Oh! You'll begin, you'll begin to understand, okay, how many Herald or Fairy monsters should I play? What is the correct ratio? You start asking yourself the right questions. Constructing this Cyber Angel deck with Heralds teaches you as a newcomer, as a, as a, as a new player, the correct ratios of how many fairies you should play so that you do not brick or you do not have bad hands. You learn these vital skills which will then can then be passed on to when you're actually building a deck that has those that has just generic hand traps. This is why I would say it's important to you as a newcomer, if you don't know about hand traps, play the Herald, be the Cyber Ranger with Herald deck first. Get a taste of how to play a deck with its own inbuilt hand traps. And then, once you're familiar with this, then, and you generally know how this deck is working and you you get to familiarize yourself with how many hand trap uh, fairies you want in your deck, then once you're familiar with those ratios, then build yourself, okay? An average deck with just generic hand traps that are not searchable or whatever and this gets you an overall idea of how hand traps work in Yu-Gi-Oh! Alrighty then, so let's start by building this board. So a demonstration of how you could do this combo is as follows. First you'd activate Ritual Sanctuary. Use its effect to add the ritual spell that you need. Uh, normal summon the Manju. Manju will activate its effect and after you've done so, you can see in front of you, obviously, you can see the Herald of Perfection with Protecting Spirit Logath, which will be in your hand at this point in time, because you've added the Herald of Perfection with, uh, you know, Manju. Uh, Ritual Summon with Dawn of the Herald. Obviously, after, obviously, you activate the effect of Protecting Spirit Logath in your hand. Special Summon it. Then use the effect of Dawn of the Herald, as you can see there. Ritual Summon using the Spirit of Logath into Herald of Perfection. The effect, you will use the effect of Dawn of the Herald, bringing back yourself the Protecting Spirit of Logath back into your hand. Meaning that, and then if we can look at, remind ourselves the effect of Spirit Lo Logath there is that whenever a Fairy Monster's effect is activated, it gets to just special summons itself from the hand. Okay, this allows you to always have a rolling neg uh, rolling ritual summon uh, ritual summon target you can always use for ritual summon every turn and you can keep returning it back to the hand or whatever things you want to do. A simple combo there allowing you to have a full step negation and, and full step resource management or things like that. You can also go into other cards that are can be mentioned here that you can use in your the Cyber Angel with Herald's deck. You can use Power Angel Valkyria, uh, normal summon this, or have an additional summon, summon this, then summon Manju. The effect of uh, that, make yourself the Herald of Perfection, you know how things are going. When you negate an effect with uh, Herald of Perfection, the effect of Power Angel activates there, meaning you get to add another Light Fairy. Again, we see the consistency, we see all manners of things going there. Or you could take a different route and use the Divine of the Herald there. Use Divine of Herald, use its effect, send Herald of Arclight, Arclight's effect, allowing you to add a ritual, a spell, or monster, depending on the effect you choose with the Herald of Arclight synchro. And you see the world is your oyster. And that's essentially it, really. So let's go on to the overall conclusion. That's it, really. So let's conclude. When it comes to hand traps in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's quite important, and as I'll say, here's a Yu-Gi-Oh sensei, that you play a Cyber Angel deck with the Herald with the Herald rituals in it. Not only does this help, you can play the ratio however you want to play it. It doesn't matter, because the whole purpose of this is for you as a newcomer to understand the implications and abilities of hand traps. Obviously, within this archetype or fusion that I have, as your sensei, constructed here, 
it really will showcase to you the usage of hand traps, how it's useful, why, how many, how much cards are we going to use to negate? Is two, three enough? Should we play multiple? Should we not? The ratios, you start asking yourself the right questions. And this is what this exercise is about. And this is why I instruct as your Yu-Gi-Oh sensei to make a deck with cyber of cyber angels with heralds. It is going to be a bit difficult at first, a bit intimidating, but this is going to be the first step for you guys, my fellow students, in becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh master, understanding how the deck works. Because the whole point of this exercise is that I would like you as players, and now you you at this point should be familiar with the game and familiar with a lot of things, what hand traps are the ratios about them, and to be asking the right kind of questions. Because when it comes to hand traps, this is, this is the best, uh, ar best two archetypes that will teach you the fundamentals of what hand traps are in Yu-Gi-Oh, how to utilize them, the correct ratios, and how it affects deck building and how you strategize or influence your opponent with the hand traps that you have available currently to you, okay? These are all inbuilt in the archetype, but it teaches you valuable skills, valuable ways to understand that hand traps can affect you more than you realize and that you shouldn't be, and you should have the correct ratio and the correct temperament and the correct attitude and obviously the correct things and all ingredients involved to understand hand traps as a whole. And that's all we have got to say in this video. Tune in next time and we'll talk about another topic with the Easy Archetype series. Hopefully you enjoy it. Hope to, hope to see you soon. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right? is in your hands.